what a whirlwind couple of days for the Democrats. Their mood's been all over the place, kind of a whiplash of emotions. Well, after their wins in Kentucky, in Virginia, in Ohio, MSNBC panels were oozing excitement. And liberals were proclaiming that Biden was back, baby. Campaign officials said, it's, we're golden now. But now you can almost feel their heart palpitations because third-party challengers aren't dropping out of the race. More are jumping in. It's not just Bobby Kennedy Jr. It's, and Joe Manchin. It's Cornell West and Jill Stein. That takes the potential threshold of third-party candidates to an unprecedented level. If you have two third-party challengers that get on the ballot in many of these really, really tight states, it could cause a problem for the president. When you do the electoral math, what happens more often than not with a no-labels candidacy uh, is that Donald Trump gets elected to the White House. There will be no country if we don't have historic and epic voting in 2024. Doug scared. And those fears are not without merit, though, because first, in 2020, remember, just 44,000 votes in Georgia, Arizona, and Wisconsin, 44,000 separated Biden and Trump from a tie in the Electoral College. And second, you know, money's pouring in from rich donors who think Biden's on the brink. And I'm not talking brink of victory. Manchin is affiliated with a group called No Labels that is exploring a centrist unity ticket in 2024. They are already on the presidential ballot in 12 states, including several key battlegrounds. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has called No Labels perilous to democracy. Biden has called their efforts a mistake. Mm, I bet. And then this from the folks at Puck. Some are whispering about the potential for a brokered convention next summer when Biden could be convinced by party leaders, people he respects, like Obama, Clyburn, Nancy Pelosi, to step down if his numbers are still dismal. I don't think that's going to happen. But I say if these folks are too pessimistic, Joe Biden, is, look, I think he's getting warmed up. I'm looking on the positive side here. And there's a lot of good news out there, like he's almost able to dress himself. That's the guy who's going to be sitting across the table from China's President Xi Jinping in less than a week. And all indications are that Biden is preparing to begin a new era of capitulation, <clears throat> excuse me, um, cooperation with China. Now, we know the complicated negotiations have basically been done by Biden's crack negotiators over the past six months or so. He's just there for the photo op. But we know this. What's going to come out of this will be good for China and terrible for us. Because with Biden poised to give up key U.S. leverage, probably the major tariffs on Chinese imports, Xi knows that he can promise and never deliver. Oh, we're going to help you, Joe, on climate change. Yeah, right. Is China prepared to blow up all the hundreds of new coal-fired plants they built over the past few years? That is never going to happen. But they will dominate EV manufacturing and put our car companies out of business. They'll do that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.